Uh, these two guys were really, really good leadoff guys in their big league careers. And the, the whole position has changed. We've got the, the home run king in the American League this year, Aaron Judge is a leadoff guy. We got the NL home run king, Kyle Schwarber. He's a leadoff guy. What has happened to this spot? <laughs> I mean, they've changed. They're looking a little different now. It was a few guys back in the days, back in Harold's days, that, that were these big power guys. But they could also run as well, and I think that's something that you're starting to see a little bit of a trend change. It all started with probably one of your boys right here, HR. Oh, yeah. He was playing against Ricky. Yeah. You got Soriano. He was the guy that was always like that power-speed combo. Granderson, especially when he went over to the Yankees, he get 40-some homers. But now with these young guys, with the J-Rods, with the Mookies, I mean, these are extremely athletic guys that get on base, but they just happen to have power. So it completely makes sense when you have them at the top of the lineup, even a Acuna. These guys are extremely athletic, but at the same time, they can start the game off one nothing, putting you on the board early. Altuve has been one of the best of all time, future Hall of Famer. But now you have Aaron Judge, you have Judge, and you have Schwarber that are both guys that, yeah, it can be one nothing, but are they getting wasted by being at the top of the lineup? Because yes, they have the power, but especially with a guy like Schwarber, he's not getting on bases as much as he normally does. So would it be better with him moving around a little bit? Well, I look at the, those two players differently because Schwarber's in a lineup flowing with boppers. Whereas Aaron Judge, yes, he's got he's got Stanton and Rizzo, but they're not having the years that Real Muto's had and what you're expecting from Harper when he's healthy and Castellanos. I, I, so here's my want, question. Yeah. Can the Yankees win the World Series with Aaron Judge batting leadoff? And they have the same bullpen? At, well, the same team. They're, they're not <laughs> adding anybody. I mean, I, I just think from a production standpoint, when Aaron Judge homers, and he will homer in the postseason, I don't want it to be a solo. They're going to need runs. And so if you look at what he did down the stretch, and I know they were trying to get him 62 home runs. So I thought that was their philosophy. To see him start in the leadoff spot the other night was a little bit of a surprise to me because I think he had, what, 10 RBIs in the month of September, October? 10? With, I, with 62 homers, he should have had 150 to 170 RBIs. Yeah. With that many home runs. I mean, yeah, for me, with, with Judge... Earlier in the season when he did move to the leadoff spot, it seems like the offense wasn't moving at all. It seemed like everybody was struggling. They was trying to get a spark, trying to get something to get everybody going. But once you have Glaber swinging the bat a little better, once you have Rizzo swinging the bat a little better, now you can go ahead and drop Judge in between these guys to give Judge some protection, kind of like you do with the Jordan Alvarez. Give yeah. him some protection yeah. with some guys around him and let him come up with some runners on base. Like and give Glaber better the, pitches. I would love to see Glaber get better pitches with well, Judge. Well, everybody's going to get better pitches yeah. with him behind him. Now, Greg, to just make sure the numbers were right, he had 11 home runs and 18 RBIs in September and October. Is that going to win it for you? No. no. you got to get more from him than that. Now, so who's the best that. leadoff hitter right now in the postseason? Let's take a look at someone that's doing it at a high level. It's Stephen Kwan. Highest contact rate this year. He had three hits uh, for the Guardians in game one of their series.